before I forget, I would like to take this opportunity to say happy Valentine's to every person in there under the sound of my voice. Come on and give yourself a hand. Come on. Now, I really do feel sorry if you're not happy that it's Valentine's Day. So I'm going to say it one more time. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody that's inside this sanctuary. Hey, well, only a few is clapping. I'm so sorry. Y'all want to do it again? Happy Valentine's Day. So give yourself a hand. Even though you might not have nobody giving you all of the flowers and candy, and, but you got to learn how to be happy and content with yourself. You got to learn how to value yourself. You got to learn how to really love yourself. Not will you become an idol, but that you respect and honor yourself. And you got to learn how to be good to yourself. See what I'm trying to say? You do, you do, you do, you do. And what I found out is that even when I made that little statement right there, I looked at the body, because I'm always getting a pulse for the body. And as I said that, many just looked. When I said happy Valentine's Day and give yourself a hand, some chose not to even clap. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that it's bad, but that can also mean that it's not good too. Amen. And so I mean this pastoral. If you don't feel like it's happy Valentine's because you don't have a significant other or you don't have no boo or no baby girl, whatever you want to put on it, and ain't nobody bought you nothing. Anybody gonna give you nothing. It's gonna be another night that you're at home by yourself or whatever. Then you got to learn how to love yourself. And if you are flipping the pages and spending time with God like you're supposed to, you should be developing an intimacy with God as well as yourself. Mm. As me and Pastor Dean was at Victory Christian Center today taking care of some kingdom business, and then we went over to chapel at ORU. And one of the young men of God that comes to the service said, T. He heard T.D. Jake say that I, I know myself and I got to be honest with myself. Right. Uh, the young man of God said, I, I don't go back to my dorm until nighttime. He said, because it's not good for me to be by myself. He said that he know his self. Right, right. So he says, I do not go to the dorm, meaning to his room. Until at night, when it's time to go to sleep. Because he said, I know myself. A young 21 year old college student, ORU, dropped it in my spirit and that sat on me. Some of us had grandkids and don't know ourselves. We constantly make the same mistakes, thinking that a different result would happen. Sometimes it's good to get out the box and go experience. So I'm sitting in chapel, worshiping with all the excitement, me and Pastor Dean, and text the first lady and said, my God, all the energy that these kids got, all the life inside of ORU chapel, such a blessing. And then I seen all of the young ladies that was leading us in worship last Sunday that were uh, they told me we all going to be back and we're bringing all kind of students with us. Son. Amen. I said, amen. And so I felt kind of convicted. That's where I'm going with this because they did what they call for the month of February a relationship series, right? And I said, dang, dang I missed it. I said, God, why do I not think in terms of February, Valentine, all that being just, you know, relational love and flowers and uh, maybe I should have had y'all teach me. <laughs> my mind didn't register. And it's happy Valentine's in my kingdom. I promise you that. <laughs> yeah, and it is. And I ain't funny. It all about she killer, but I didn't think about it. And I got convicted, Mama Donna, because I haven't really talked about relationship. And then the, the president 
him and his beautiful wife for 41 years. Got up on the stage and he sat there and she sat there and they just began to, let me put it in our verbs, chop it up. And she began to give the young students those that, because they asked the question, how many of y'all want to be married? And a lot of them raised their hand, but then some of the kids that were sitting beside us said, I'm glad he thinking like that, but one day he probably would want to be married. And so she began to give some strategic points, some healthy advice about relationships. And one of the things she said is communication. Being able to communicate how you feel, what you're thinking with your significant other. She said something that spoke real, real loud to me. I don't know about nobody else. All them kids, Q, you know, you graduated from all you. She said the thing too, she said you cannot depend Think what she learned, that you got to have your own relationship with Christ. You can't be looking for your significant other, my God, to give you something that only God can give you. Mm. So whether he or she is giving you that, you good whether you get it or not because you got your own relationship with God. You talking about somebody that got 41 years of marriage. Then he listed she and he listed all the different three types of love. The friendship, you got to have that. Be friends, husband and wives. Don't lose that. Then he talked about the intimate part, and I'm going to leave that alone because I don't want nobody to get You got to have that too. Yeah, you got to have that too. And they talked about the, what is the last one? The agape. You got to have that too. You got to be the love unconditionally in a relationship. But I'm going to bring that into the church now. I know I'm always going somewhere. I ain't just going somewhere just to be going somewhere. So when we say we love God, but then we have a hard time with loving those that are sitting around us, how do you think the King of Kings looks at that? If I, if I can't co-labor and work with somebody because I don't like the way they may do something or I don't like the way whatever, and I can't, I don't show no mercy and I don't show no justice, then I'm gonna put myself on the other side of the Constitution. We say God so loved the world, which He did, He gave. Love gives. Love gives passes. Love gives understanding. Love is long suffering. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is forgiving. But what if they keep doing it to me? You let them. Are you allow them? Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? Are you allow her? So if you're constantly being mishandled, you're the one that's allowing That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's dangerous to come into the house of the Lord and not allow God to deal with our heart. There's a lot of people sitting in a lot of places of course, we was in a deep meeting today to sit in the presence of the Lord with a very hard, wounded conscience. That is very dangerous. And it's very unhealthy, church, to constantly come week after week after week and you don't allow God to take the heart of stone up out of our heart and put a heart of flesh of mercy and justice and forgiveness and love. It's critical. It's critical. It's critical. It's just interesting when you go places outside of the norm and you see stuff from a different perspective. That What that does, it enlarges your capacity to see life different. When you sit up and listen to other people's testimony, other people's story, you sit up and just watch and listen. All the energy of these kids, all, all just, it just was just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I think I may go back up to tomorrow at 11 o'clock chapel and just worship. 
course, you know, I got on the joint going on for Christ stuff, and so they look in, and a lot of people know and, and, and see the, the a pearl and stuff like that, but it was just good. A lot of energy. Bishop used to say, that's why he said he loved to keep young minds around him. Young minds. Young minds. Young minds, older folks. That's us, older folks. Keep some young minds. Brandon, keep some young minds. Keep you some little soldiers around. They got young minds. See what I'm trying to say? Because we can tend to get in. We can, you know how come our parents and grandparents and great. We just stuck. I don't want to make my beans that way. That's the new way. I want to make it the old way. God, don't tell me how to cook these spaghetti. My grandma and great grandma been cooking these spaghetti these like this for 20 plus years. I don't want to cook it. I like to well, try. Just try. Don't be afraid to try something different, y'all. You know what I mean? Put people around you that will stretch you. Put people around you that know more than you do. Put people, believe it or not, majority of people that y'all think is around me ain't around me. Just because you see me communicating with them don't mean that they're around me. See, that's different from being around me. See, this is up close. That don't mean you're around me because you're right. right. <laughs> Felicia, did you catch that? I see. Just because a person is up here and they may even send a text jack out at me, that don't mean they're around you. That's right. That's right. Put people around you that will stretch you, that will tell you the truth that know Henry more than you. Yes. What God has called you to, son, you gotta have people that has already trail, yes. was trailblazed, that's already laid the road, already laid the path for you, yes. and all you gotta do is walk it like I did with Bishop. Yes. Everything gonna come that's supposed to come. Well, yes. see, we so used to the familiar, we don't want nobody around us that know more because now we feel inadequate, unqualified. Because our self-esteem, woman of God, and our self-image and self-confidence is all messed up. See, what is the Spirit of God doing? It's just speaking down home truth to a people of God that's supposed to be built up on them in their most holy faith. Yeah. That's all. Because when you build yourself up, you function different. When you build yourself up, man of God, when you start feeling good about yourself, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to hurt ourselves no more. We don't want to do some of them things, come on, that we, that we used to do when you start feeling good about yourself. When you start feeling good about yourself, you want to do good. You want to you wanna look good. You, you just want to do things right. different. How many of y'all right. feel good about yourself, man? Right. Amen. Amen. I don't know, I just feel good. Mm. Y'all don't even have to stand tonight. Just turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 20. So good to read the one you're reading. Huh? It's just great, ain't it? Has it been great, Shay? Exodus chapter 20, y'all got it? The Bible says, New Living, it says, uh, starting in verse number one, it says, Then God gave the people all these instructions. Whew. He says, I am the Lord your God. He lets them know, Pastor Chimp, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. Egypt in the Bible days was a form of captivity. You bring it up to our day, Mama Donna, it represents the world. The world. God said, I rescued you from Egypt. Captivity. For us, he brought us up out of the world. Ephesians, Ephesians. Read the book of Ephesians. We was alienated. We was cut off from the things of God because we was dead because of the things of the world. Rescue you from the from, 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 from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. Then he says, you must not. Look at your name and say, have not. He says, you must not or have not have any other little G, God, but me. 
New Living says, some by Trinity say besides me, but New Living says, but me. Emphasizes, but me. Some of you husbands and wives look at your neighbor, your wife, and say, you shouldn't love nobody but me. You should have no other man or woman but me. Father, thank you for the freedom, Lord, to love on your people, to encourage your people. Father God, I thank God for all that you're doing. Lord, my God, if they only knew. Some see the buzz and hear the buzz, but they really don't fully understand, God. But the people of God is about to see how much the hand of the Lord is on top of this ministry, Father God, and that the favor of God is running us down, 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 down. And I thank you that in the beginning of the year, Lord, you said you were cut for the comeback, and you have done it. Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing in the midst of the hearts of all of us. Strengthen the body. Strengthen the people of God. Father God, the water is not troubled. The water is settled. And I thank you, Father God, for the favor of God. And Lord, as you continually do it, Lord, I will continue to stay small in my eyes. I will continue, Father God, to magnify and glorify your name. Father God, I understand that when you bless, Father God, it's just another level of shouting about the goodness and testifying about the goodness and the favor of the Lord. I pray, Father God, that no one under the sound of my voice ever be ashamed to give you the glory for the things you have done and is doing in their lives, Father. Mm. Father God, I'm ready to sound a trumpet, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I love you. I love you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. Help us to love ourselves with balance. Help us to esteem you more highly than anything and any person in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Please say amen. 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 If anyone, church, or anything occupies a place in our lives <coughs> ahead of God, <coughs> then our lives are out of control and out of balance. Are y'all with me so far? Anything that occupies our lives ahead of God, boy, y'all look like students tonight. Y'all focus. Y'all got y'all pen and paper. Amen. Amen. Anything that occupies, I'm sitting on that. Anything that sit next to the Godhead. Anything, watch my verbs, that sit next to the Godhead. Some of you don't know what that is. That's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Trinity. Anything, Sister Joyce, that's sitting next to mm -hmm. the Godhead is not good. Okay? Y'all with me so far? Okay. Mm. This is the gist of the first commandment. Gist means the main or essential part of the matter. The main or essential part of the matter. God wants to tell us who must be on must be first in our lives. God wants to tell us who must be first in our lives. God wants to tell us who must be first in our lives. God wants to tell us who must be first in our lives. Who's first? So the title of the sermon is who is on the throne? Who's on the throne? We know it's a holiday tomorrow. If the Lord allows us to see that holiday. But I just want to ask a question to encourage the body. Who's on the throne? That's a Selah moment right there. 
as the Spirit of God led us, talking about all the different uh, rituals and things that we do, and, and the Spirit of God said, but we neglect justice and mercy and so forth. So you and I got to back up and ask yourself, who's on the throne? So as I was communicating with Brother Stacy <laughs> yesterday, and I told you that you confirmed my message, right? Okay. You got to ask yourself, this is a serious I'm Ceylon, I'm flowing like this because I need all of us to understand. Because a lot of our, some of us, thank you, Holy Ghost, some of us, some of our frustration and the reason why doors is not opening, reason why things is not happening, reason why we, our giving don't seem like it's doing anything, our tithing don't seem like it's doing anything. We go from dead job to dead job, dead relationship to dead relationship, no, 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 no excitement in our marriages and so forth. You got to ask yourself, who's on the throne next to the Trinity? Because when you read throughout the, 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 the commandments, he say, I am a jealous God. God ain't sharing the throne with nobody. And so if we choose to allow something or some people to sit on the throne next to the Trinity, we are hindering what the Trinity needs to do and wants to do in our lives. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. Don't nobody take this the wrong way. If you took your money and you went out and bought all the gifts for your significant other, whoever, whatever you do and however you do Valentine's Day, and you didn't honor God first, God sees that. See, something as simple as something like that destroys the vine. That's Bible. So we go spend a hundred, two, three hundred dollars on gifts and whatever we do on Valentine's hotels and all those type of stuff. Do all that, but did you rob God to do it? Mm -hmm. Put point number one up there. Let's look at the requirement. We flow a little bit. God's requirement is very simple to the body of Christ, y'all. He demands. It's not an option. He demands to be first place in every, every area of your lives. Because I'm a builder, and because I love the people, and I want you ready to stand before God whenever that day comes, let me bring it back down to simplistic verbiage. When you take God's money and make sure that your hair and your nails are done, thank you ladies for nodding, because it's the truth. See, people don't want to talk about this, but I care about your life. So I know several people. I won't call no name because I'm pastoral tonight that don't pay tithes at all in this church, but every time I look at them, they hurt and their nails is always done. They don't pay tithes, Sister Jackie, but yet I always see them at different restaurants. I'm not trying to criticize nobody. I'm just trying to make you see that there's something other than the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost right. sitting on the throne. And if you honor God with your giving, like that one do, I call the name, but I ain't talking about that one. I sure ain't talking about that one. Real talk, because he is handling her business when it comes to anything got to do with giving. But if you're not, God is. I'm not talking to you as Matt, Pastor Matt say. Don't get upset with me. That's right. This is the spirit of God speaking. My passion ain't in the way. Ain't nothing in the way. I'm flowing because I love you. But there's people that do a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. And God is somewhere, key word, somewhere <laughs> on the list. If I get a chance to make time for it. But God requires... Requirement is just very simple. He demands first place in our life. He knows that all men must have a God. See, you got to worship something. Yeah. Oh, my God. You got to worship something. Yeah, yeah. You know, and God understands when we're in the world, church, because. Mm. God knows that every human being, y'all listen to me, this is a good flow tonight, has to worship something. Before I came to know Christ, game banging was my God. Selling crack and smoking crack was my God. 
What's your God tonight? What's your God when you ain't in church? In the midnight hour when ain't nobody at home, what's your God? See, you're going to find something to worship. We teach in discipleship two, one now, whatever you focus on the longest becomes, listen to me, y'all, the strongest. Wherever your focus is, that's what you're going to navigate to. I'm reminded of the great T.D. Jakes. He said, uh, he said he preached a sermon called, I'm coming out head first. And he, and he leaned, he said, wherever the head go, the body got to follow. So where's your head going? Where's your focus going? Where's your thoughts going? Where's your appetite going? Where's your attitude going? Who oh, come on, are you listening to me? Because whatever you focus on, that's what you worship. And so, therefore, if you don't never focus on reading the Constitution, God is not your God. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so, if you never need this, I question, is God your God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bible. You're going to find something to worship. Think about the things that you worship and the things that you did, hopefully that you did, used to do, before you came to know Christ. Yeah. Oh, my God, those are the things and the people that you worshiped. Right. See what I'm trying to say? And so, therefore, if you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, my God, and them are the things, Aisha, that you used to do and the things that you used to put on it, worship, and you still are doing those same things and worship those same things, that's a problem. Yes, if you in God now, he'll give you a pass before you come to know him. Because uh, he don't think, he don't, he don't expect unsaved people, my God, to honor him at that level. Because they don't know. That's Bible. But my God, but when you accept Christ and you get on this side and you still worshiping and hungering and thirsting after those things, now it become a problem. At first, God ain't offended about it because you don't know no better. Oh, my God, but when you come to know Christ, my God, and you still worshiping people and places and things, right. yeah. and they sitting on the throne with the Trinity, now God got a my God. problem. Yes, sir. With that. Save the people. Save the people. See what I'm trying to say? And so, 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 again, who's on the throne? Okay? Let me give you this one. Work could be on the throne. Some people got three and four jobs, Scooter, and still broke. You know why? Because they're not working smart. If you don't deal with the spirit of lust, that's the root problem. Lack of control, that's the other part of it. So if you don't kill those things, then you can, you can work 12 jobs and still be broke because you ain't dealt with the real problem, lust and no self-control, no denial. Sometimes you got to tell yourself, no. And when God is on the throne, the Holy Spirit will tell you when you walk past the stove, no. When you reach in your pocket and the Spirit of God speaks to you and God brings back to you, remember what pastor people said? Because you got that card in your pocket and they got your name on it. I'll say the card, credit card, and they got your name on it and you can't pay them people their money. The Spirit of God said, no, don't spend. Because yeah, yeah. you know you can't pay them people back their money. So why are you going out buying this stuff? It's lust. Right. What's your motive for buying it when you know you can't afford it and you know you, ain't gonna, you, can't, you can't even pay the bill? So now you're just rolling stuff over from one credit card to another credit card to another yeah. credit card. Yeah. Uh, just a repeated cycle of debt and disorder. The same thing I talked yeah. about before I started talking, yeah. preaching. That's it. That's it. Yeah. You got to realize, church, I've been redundant, but I'm going to keep emphasizing it. You got to realize what type of pastor you're sitting up under. A pastor that builds your life. Right. Yeah. I ain't here to entertain you. Yeah. Jesus did not do no entertaining. Jesus changed lives, saved souls, altered destinies, caused the blind to see, the lame to walk. My God, when Christ showed up on the scene, something had to change, I died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What needs to die tonight? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good flow. Remember, you're going to worship something because we created to worship. That's Bible. We are worshiping beings, so we are created to worship. And so, my God, here's the problem is, my God, our worship has got diverted and contaminated, and we start worshiping the wrong thing instead of creating other things. Uh -huh. You see what I'm trying to say? So, so, so you got to be very careful about your worship. See, one of the ones I got to watch, and I did good during the consecration, is, is the gym. Mm -hmm. Working out, which is a good thing. See, we can justify, well, I'm working out, I'm taking care of myself. Yeah, but if God said, I don't want you to work out for 21 days, and I do it, see, then I dishonor God. Mm -hmm. That means the gym is going to become my God. They're quick, even though I'm the pastor. Right. See, obedience is better than a sacrifice. Mm, mm, mm. 
God knows mankind. He knows you and I, church. Psalms 33, write this down. 14 through 15. This is a good message to teach inside the jail too, Pastor Francetta. My God. Psalms 33, 14 and 15 says, from the throne, God, we're talking about God. He observes all who live on earth, y'all. Verse 15 of Psalms 33 says, he made their hearts so he understands everything that we do. God understands everything that we do. So when we say God know my heart, he do. Mm -hmm. But he also know how wicked and ungodly our heart is. Oh my God. See, I said, that's why it's dangerous to keep quit talking about yes. God know my heart. Yes. Yes. When God tells you the word that the heart is wicked, yes. we would do all kind of stuff. Think about the stuff that you did before you came to know Christ. Stuff that when you think about, I know me, let me use me because I don't want nobody. Uh, it even makes me even cry sometimes. I yes. do. I drive down the street, I can start crying on the inside. Yes. Sir. Some of the things that thought, the things that I did when I was worshiping them streets. My God, the pain is still there 23 years later, completely set free, but the pain, even though it's up in the attic, that's why you got to allow the spirit of the living God to go up into the attic of your mind and renovate your mind. Even though you're not actively feeding it, my God, but it's in the attic. You know, think about the attic. You put that up there so you don't, because you don't want to deal with it. Sometimes you just, it's like a foul cabin. Yes, and you put it there, but sooner or later, you got to go up into the attic. You need those Christmas decorations, Jackie. So you got to go up in the attic and get it. Sooner or later, my heart and the Spirit of God going to say, it's time to go up and visit the attic. It's time to go up and get some stuff down, Shemaine, because <laughs> it's time for me to deal with it. Because where well, I'm taking you, my God, uh, if, I, if I don't get you over this, if I don't get you delivered or healed from this stuff, that you didn't file away. See, God will let you file some stuff away for a season. Then he, my God, then he's going to send you back around and say, go up into the attic. My God, go up into the attic and get it and bring it down because you're going to have to deal with it because I can't let it go over into freedom. See what I say? So God knows. He sits on the throne, the Bible says, and he looks and he knows. Exodus 34, 14, listen to this right here. It says, you must worship no other gods, little G, little G, no other gods for the Lord, whose very name is Jealous, is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. My God, his, his very name is Jealous. So if you and I has a, have a real vibrant relationship with God, we just learn, my God, that God is a jealous God, and he won't share his glory or his love, or his Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. God is speaking. God don't want to share his affection, my God, that he has towards you and I with nothing. Oh, my God. Affect yeah, we got affection in God. He's touched by our infirmities, my God. When we hurt, he hurt, my God. When we ain't doing good, Felicia, he ain't doing good. Come on. The Bible says, my God, in the book of Exodus, my God, the Bible says he's seen and he heard the misery of the people. He said, I'm concerned about my people. He said, so for to come down and see about my people. God is concerned about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God don't want to show his affection. God is in, he's in, he's wants to be intimate with you. Not intimate the way we talking about flesh. We talking about intimate where, where, where he talk to you. We tell you, no, don't do that. He ain't it. She ain't it. Oh, it ain't time yet. I'll let you go back to school then. I'll, you get that job. It ain't time. See, God wanna to talk to you like that. He yeah. he 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 wants you to he wanna to talk to you and be intimate with you. That's why the Bible says he's married to the church. That's why he's liking the church as the bride. Think about a husband and a wife, the bride. He's married to the church. He's married to you and I. He said, I'm married to the backslider. Also, when we turn away, Tanya, and walk away from God, it hurts God. When we don't do what God tells us to do, it hurts God. It hurts him because he don't want you and I to kill ourselves. He said, son, don't do it. Daughter, don't do it. Listen to the pastor. I know he's on tradition, but listen to him. That's him. That's me speaking to the pastor. He's trying to warn you. He's trying to help you but you won't listen. That's God. He's trying to help you, but you won't listen. I know what I'm talking about because I've been there. Our God is a thing or a person, y'all, which we think most precious. Our God is a thing or a person. Oh, now, I know, now I'm, I'm going to use Mother and Miss, uh, 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 that they love, I'm talking about they love each other for real, for real, for real. But they got each other in its proper place. I guarantee you, he's not on the throne next to God, and she's not on the throne next to God in their life. And they got a solid relationship, and it ain't front either. I've been knowing them for years. I ain't just met the, the Thomases. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, my God, what's precious to you? What's more precious to you than even God? Well, so is it Facebook? 
Some, you mean tell me that we worship Facebook more than a God who created Facebook? I mean, I want, I want, I want us to feel it. Because God is jealous behind this stuff. Is it partying? Is it kicking it? It used to be alcohol for you and I. Love the alcohol. Love the alcohol. What is it? Is it mean? You got to have a man? You got to have a man? Some of you can't. I'm sorry. Some people, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, I'm cleaning up. Some people can't wait to get home so they can go talk overseas to somebody they ain't never seen. Some, some, some people can't even come to church. I'm talking about here and everywhere else. Uh, maybe I'm talking about somewhere else. Uh, they miss church tonight because he said, I can only talk to you at this certain time. And you're like, oh, no, I got to go to church. Yeah, but miss church, it's okay. God know your heart. He's going to forgive you. And so she stay home, my God, to talk to somebody she ain't never seen before. Oh, my God, he promised all these fake dreams. Yeah. Are we worshiping some thing? Are we worshiping some people? I like the humor. But I want you to take it real serious. Real serious. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, our God, our, God, our little God, our little God is the thing that we, we think, we think, y'all. That's why the mind, be transformed by the renewing of the mind, that we think is most important. Our most precious. Think about the word precious. Ah, uh, you listening to me. Think about the word Precious. My God, my God, you, you, it, what, what's precious to you? Uh, when he put the ring on him, oh, honey. Oh, the, uh, are you with me? Are you with me? See, we got to think about stuff like that. Let me go a little deeper. Here's another thing. Our God is the thing whom we make the most greatest sacrifice for. Our God is the thing that we make the most greatest sacrifice for. Think about the sacrifices you make for that thing. Think about, my God, I, 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 I'm going to use it. The, the men, the greatest sacrifice that you have to make when you're trying to cheat. How you got to try to line upon line, precept upon precept to dot your eyes across your teeth because if she find out, she's coming for you. But see, you got to make major sacrifices. You see, I see you change your passcode every 24 hours. All of those type of stuff. This, this, it's just too much. It's too much Gethsemane. It's too much pressure. Oh my God, it ain't even worth it anyway. Uh, I promise you, my God. Think about the sacrifices you make to do the things. Watch this. Here we go, Holy Ghost. Think about the sacrifice we make to do the things that please the flesh. But then when it comes time for the pastor to put a sacrifice on you, when it comes time for the word of God to put a demand on you, my God, all of a sudden now it's all type of excuses, my God. Oh, my God, but you'll make all kind of sacrifices for the flesh, but you won't make none for the Holy Spirit. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, you'll make all type of sacrifices for your job, and then you'll, you'll, you'll put church to the side. See what I say? Because you don't see the church, my God, as significant. But Bishop taught me early on in life, my God, when I came to him, my God, he made me understand, Mr. Thomas, my God, how important, my God, how the church is a river into my blessing. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Boy, that's why I thank God yes, for being sir. dusty. He taught me how the church is a river yes. into blessing me. A river. Yes. That's why Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, tell us not to, because many people along the way, brother boy, has blessed me. I have got a lot of keys from different people, mother, along the way, my God, to get to where I'm at today. And if I had not been in service, my God, if I had not took in God's house, my God, took in God's house, my God, for real, then it would have interfered yes. Yes. with, my God, the river of blessing that has come to my So many people, mother, has deposited. I'm not talking about tangible stuff. Principles and giving me tools, giving me things, my God, that was unlocking me, my God, and preparing me, my God, to handle the mantle, my God, that I didn't even know I was called to handle. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So you do yourself a disservice, Virgil, when you decide to tell yourself, I don't need to be at church. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, mm, mm. But I'm going to go to work. Because yeah. you know why? And I'm getting ahead of myself because guess what? That paycheck is my God. You ain't doing nothing for me. You, I come to church, I got to give money. When I go to work, I got to make money. Look at the poverty mentality of that right there. Look how we, see, I got to give money to the bride, to something that Christ died for. We see 
We see, we see God taking from us when we come to the house instead of us giving to God. Because when you come to church, you come, my God, D, to worship God. Worship you means you giving something away. I give myself away. See, see, you give, see, you got the Rome, and that's why the heavens are closed over your life. And everything is a struggle. Because again, there's something sitting beside the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Mm, mm, mm. Let me give you this right here. He is, he is the person, this is, I'm going to give you the, 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 the quote, the, the guy that wrote this, I mean, the, 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 uh, this quote. He is the person or thing that if lost, talking about the, our God, he is the, the person or thing that if lost would leave us desolate. Alan Redpath said that. Our God is a person or thing that if lost would leave us desolate. If God said, give it to me, like he's telling some of y'all tonight, come give it to me. Mm -hmm. What you going to do? Alan, Alan, what is his name? Alan Red, Alan, Alan Redpath said, he said, it's the thing, my God, that will leave you most desolate. If God said, come give it to me. Put it on the altar. Come on, come, come on, Abraham, give me that promise. What, God, you told me that you was going to bless the world from the promise. I, I'm 90 years, and my wife is, what, I'm 100 or 90? You, you're going to take the very end. How are you going to execute? How are you going to birth the promise? How are you going to fulfill the scripture? God said, come give them. To the very thing that Abraham waited all his life for, and God said, give it to me. And then right when Abraham was getting ready to, 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 to slay, depending on what translation, his son, he had his hand up, and he was coming down, and the Bible said, stay thy hand. Stay, New King James Version, stay thy hand. Now I know that I can trust you. You was willing to give me your only son that you waited all your life for. And as soon as I said, give him to me, my God, you got the wood, you started up the, wild, the mountain, and you was on your way, and you trapped him on the altar, and you finished, uh, but the God said, stay thy hand. And God said, now it's time to take care of some business because I can trust you. So can God. See, I had to go through a series of Clipping and purging and lessons. Who, yeah. oh my God, for him to birth. My God, the ministry. And then my Madonna, I had to be found faithful in another man's vineyard, my God, for him to, mm, oh my God, I'm trying to hope my, y'all, that's all right, y'all see, y'all gonna see. Hey! Can you be found faithful? Can you be found faithful? Can God trust you? Will you give it up? What is it that's on the throne, my God, that he's saying, sacrifice him? What is God asking you? Oh, my God, I'm going to go deeper. Revelation. So, my God, Abraham had Isaac on the altar. Sacrifice. See what I say? I, the last time I checked, there was somebody else that was sacrificed. His name is called Jesus. See, that's symbolic. See, Abraham was, oh my God, I, I'm trying to hurt. See, he was, he was speaking prophetically into destiny, into the future. Old Testament was speaking into the future of Jesus being sacrificed on Calvary. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Mm, mm, mm. You got to give it up. Thing a person. I got to pay my bills. You sacrifice your time in the house of the Lord. God never told you to get that job. That's why you got it and you're still behind. That's so why the Bible says be led. And if your conscience is healthy, you ain't got a lot of offenses, you spend a time allowing God to breathe on your mind. And your mind is healthy. That's why you can't afford to be sticky. That's why you can't afford to be offended. That's why you got to be reading the word. That's why you got to back up off, my God, all the social media. That's why you got to fast on and pray, my God, declutter yourself. My God, because God going to say that ain't it. Just hold on. I promise you I'm speaking from experience. Mama, I wish I could. My God, but I almost. I said, I almost, friend. Said, Mama, I almost. And God said, no, it ain't time. Yeah, I was wrestling. Uh, but thank God I kept my mind right, my God. And now that I know it's the time, Jackie. Oh, my God. And so some of us have stepped out ahead of time, and now it's something that should have blessed us, it's cursed us. 
it looked real. See, the enemy made sure that it works well. It, 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 the hours is what you wanted. The, the, the days off is what you wanted. But guess what? The days off that you wanted. And the days off that you wanted, but you work on Sundays and Wednesdays. Yeah. Key word, you wanted these other days. Why you didn't want Sunday and Wednesdays on? But you shouting about the, jo- the second job you got because even the first job because you got the days off that you wanted. You ain't worried about, well, I ain't got church. I can do that later. That's what you think. Yeah. That's how people treat God. Yeah. Yeah. Notice I said you're shouting and testifying about the days you got off. But you work on Sundays and Wednesdays, so you can't come to church. But you ain't shouting about that. See, that don't yeah. vex you. That don't make you feel bad because you don't care about your brother and sister. You don't care about the person. See, I, ugh. See, I worked that. Yeah. But I'm shouting about, I got Mondays and Tuesdays off, so I can go, you know what I'm saying, whatever you do. Wow. But I got to work Wednesday, and I got to work Sunday. Mm-hmm. But I get to hang out and do what I want to do on Mondays and Tuesdays. Because yeah. that's the only time my girl could do my hair is on Tuesday, so therefore it don't interfere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look at our mindsets. Mm-hmm. Who's sitting on the throne? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm almost through. Well, just a thought. It's a whole lot. Just fool. Yeah. Watch this. Whatever we make the most of is our God. That's Martin Luther. Whatever we make the most of is our God. Don't let the barbershop become your God. Juju, don't let going off of Christ become your God. Don't let your wife or your husband become your God. There's balance in everything in life. Don't let your job become your God. Don't let your addictions, Pastor Dean called it attachments. Uh oh, that's a what? A, what is attached to you? You can't. Every time you clip it, it just seem to rebud. It seemed to come back alive. <laughs> you know, when you cut a stump down, come on, mother, like you talked about, and y'all been trying to kill this stump, but this stump go up over there and pop up over there. What keeps popping up? Yeah. You thought you killed it. You thought you dealt with it. You thought you put it up in the attic, but some it just seemed, Jackie, to just keep coming up. Uh, yeah, this, they should just keep. Uh, I thought I killed this, mama, but uh, it, I killed it right here, but it showed up over there. Uh, I dealt with that the encounter in 2013, and it showed back up in 2019. I thought I killed this thing. What attachments are still attached to you? that you ain't fully killed, but you've been somewhat feeding it and it's just been living. It was a snake, but it's becoming a dragon again. See, in Genesis, he was a snake. My God, by the time he got the revelations, my God, he was a dragon. So, my God, you, you thought you killed it, but you've been feeding it. It's just been nibbling. It's just been eating and staying strong enough. Oh, my God, and when he want to show his head, here he come. Ooh, my God, come on, Holy Ghost. Who's on the throne? Who's on the throne? Who's on the throne? Man by nature is a religious creature. We are by nature. He will find someone, man, that's no gender, or something to give his worship to. You're going to find something to worship. Don't get it twisted. You and I, I and you, will find something or somebody to worship. That's why we sit in here now with so much pain because we either worship a thing or a person. And as the man of God said, Alan, red path, that when God snatched it or it left, now you desolate. You worship him, now he didn't get up and walked off. You worship her, now she didn't shift it. Or that thing, my God, whatever it is, and now it's no longer there, and you've been scarred for the last 5, 10, 6, 10, 20, 30, however, I'm just, because you worshiped it. Because we are created to worship something or somebody. That's why you got to have boundaries and balance. And here is the good thing about the word of God. God tells us in the scriptures to keep everything, mother, in context. He said, worship God. Well, here's what people that's trying to sidestep the scripture. Well, what is a God? <coughs> Who is God? Because in AA, they tell you, or 12 steps, they tell you that your God can be your glasses. Your God can be, they used to say, ashtrays, or your God can be 
this, 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 this book, and I, I had a hard time with that when I was in prison. Because I told him, and I almost got kicked out of my treatment, uh, my drug treatment, because I told myself I'm not finna say my uh, 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 my God or something. Cause they say you got to go around. Hi, my name is Lawrence People. I'm an alcoholic addict. I quit saying that. I said I'm not finna say that. That's when I gave my life to Christ. I said my name is Lawrence People, and I am set free and delivered. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I should say, Jackie. That devil is a lie. And they almost because it goes against the, the order. They wanted it. Dr. Frujiski, my God, at Bowley, wanted to kick me out, but he left me in there because it was something about me. Because I took a bold stand. I'm serious, y'all. I'm finna close. I took a bold stand. I said, I'm not finna be talking about my name is Lawrence Peoples. I'm act. I said, it's life and death and the power of the tongue. I'm not finna keep speaking that. Don't you know? See, that's another. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. That's another form of slavery. Yes. The when God says you are free, but then you got to step there and tell people, my God, that give them your name and tell them that you're an alcoholic addict. The devil is a lie. I'm set free and delivered. I'm no longer a slave to drugs and alcohol. My name is Lawrence Peoples. I'm, I'm no longer a slave to alcohol and drugs or whatever your alcohol or your drug is or whatever your attachment is or whatever your sin is. You got to confess I'm no longer a slave to that no more. I thank God because there were 70 credits that I need, Brandon, to get out. I graduate that one year, and he finished that year. That's 70, that's 70 extra days off my center. But God had another plan because I took a bold stand. See, I could go on and on. That's why I'm so critical to stand. That's why I'm so critical to stand. Hi, my name is Lawrence People, and I've been free for a long time. Hi, my name is Lawrence People. My God, I am set free and delivered, baptized, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And you could be struggling with an addiction right now, but I am free. You got to confess this. I told myself when I was still smoking cigarettes, I smoked cigarettes two years after I got saved. My God, I was still smoking cigarettes. I told myself, my name is Lawrence People, and I am no longer smoking cigarettes. Yeah. And for two years later, God finally yeah. delivered me from it. Yeah. Yeah. So even though you may be struggling with something, confess your healing, confess your deliverance. My God, let God manifest. That's why I take faith and patience to do the will of God. Even if you're struggling with something, you confess that I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm set free, I'm no longer a slave to this. But don't give yourself an excuse to continue to do that. Because then you become religious. Because God knows if you're trying or not. God knows if you're trying to get free. God knows I didn't want to be my God smoking no cigarettes. I used to feel so bad, my God. And then after God delivered me, thank you, God. After God delivered me, when people smoke cigarettes coming to the chapel service in the penitentiary, I can smell the smoke. I said, my God, I used to smell like that. All in your breath and everything. Just, ah. My name is Lawrence Pipples, and I'm free. Cigarettes can't sit on the throne with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Listen, listen, listen. I'm going to close it. Oh, my God. There's so much more, but I just, I'm going to leave y'all right there. I'm going to set that right there. I'm going to finish this, but I won't, I'm not, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm, that, that's, that's enough right there. I think that's enough. Uh, I've got to be mild for the time. Who's sitting on the throne? 